Move over Piers Morgan, there's a new head honcho anti-vegan in town and his name is Jeremy Clarkson. Jeremy Clarkson is an English TV host turned wannabe farmer and is most well known for his hosting of the TV series Top Gear. We can start with the fact that he's constantly belittling vegetarians and vegans, calling us vegetableists, that's a new one, vegetableists, and in one video calls those who drink oat milk pale, spotty, gaunt virgins. Yeah, I think people who drink oat milk don't get sex. He even once said in an article that we should feed vegans to cows in order to help tackle climate change. He gets so triggered by vegans and veganism that he literally protested the fact that the Oxford Council was going to only serve plant-based meals at their meetings in order to tackle climate change. So it's not radical to make a suggestion like we should feed vegans to cows to tackle climate change. But it's completely radical to suggest we should eat plants to tackle climate change. Whoa, like so that triggered you so much that you would protest it. But it's fine to make your little tabloid sensationalized headlines like let's feed vegans to cows. The only time I've ever seen this guy angry at the fact that we kill animals is when the animals are cold on farms and their bodies aren't eaten. Quote, we are not killing animals so that we can eat them, which is sensible and proper. We are killing them and then basically throwing them away, which is utterly idiotic. Wow, so it's not the fact that we're killing animals against their will, it's the fact that their dead bodies are not eaten, which truly makes Jeremy angry. Wow. So he also caused outrage on one of his TV shows when he decided to use a bunch of dead animals as props. So I think they were trying to weigh some cows and because the, the live cows didn't want to jump on the scales, they decided to use the corpses of murdered cows, real corpses of murdered cows instead. And they were accused of killing animals for entertainment or using the dead bodies of animals for entertainment on the TV show. So that's all fine and proper for Jeremy. The thing that really gets me about Jeremy, it's, it's hard to like not think of this guy as just a proper shill for farming, a shill for the meat industry. He wrote an article saying why the UK should be proud of our animal welfare. And in the article attacks other countries, because remember it's always happening elsewhere and never in your own country. He attacked other countries' welfare and praised the UK and promoted the idea of humane washing, he said that basically what we should do is juxtapose the, the bad welfare practices of other countries with nice green grass and pasture images from the UK. But the UK's practices in many ways are not much different at all from the practices of other countries. If you want to know more, check out my Uncovered series, check out Land of Hope and Glory, check out the investigations done by Surge, Viva and Animal Equality. I've been in dozens of these factory farms now, check out the investigations by VFC, you name them. It's almost like the pro-farming bias crew like Jeremy and co, when they promote farming, it's all green pastures and grass. But when we take cameras to these places, there's all dead, dying, diseased chickens in horrible factory farms and pigs desperately trying to escape farrowing crates with dead piglets all around them and horrible images of cows desperately trying to escape a knock box inside of these family run slaughterhouses. Wow, really humane. Jeremy also wrote this article, why I won't be giving up pheasant shooting, where he literally highlights his own speciesism and then tries to justify it. He shoots wild pheasants, but hates poachers who kill wild polar bears. And when he met one, <laughs> in the middle of the night, literally pissed in his shoes. In his own words, he literally wrote out his fantasy of lion poachers being tortured and killed by Somali pirates. I mean, could you imagine if I made a statement like, pig farmers, it would be great if uh, they were tortured and killed by Somali pirates. Could you imagine what would happen to me? Well, I know what would happen because I once made a statement that, oh, I hope uh, hunters uh, shoot one of their family members on a hunting trip. Then maybe they will understand what it feels like to be hunted down and shot. And oh my God, it was like, it made headlines in the news. Pierce used it against me in the debate I had with him on Good Morning Britain. Alongside the video entitled, Ethical Hunters Deserve, Deserve a, bullet a Bullet in, in the Head, head. Yeah. you wrote, I hope one of these bleeps accidentally shoot one of their own family members in the face. Axe. Anything I've said in the past, mm. I've changed my advocacy. Mm. When I first went vegan, I was quite angry about what was happening to animals and rightly so. But wait a second, Piercy boy, 
You've got a lot in common with Piercy Boy. He even called for the decapitation of Walter Palmer, the famous uh, person who went and killed uh, Cecil the Lion. Piers Morgan hates poachers. You would be great friends. So I don't know why you punched him in the face. <laughs> Literally, he punched Piers Morgan in the face. He attacked me in a savage way. But you two would make just great buddies, the best of friends, especially with how big a hypocrites you both are. I don't condone violence, but you know, Piers does have it coming to him. So already Jeremy is displaying much of the traits of an absolute hypocrite. But let's continue. He wrote another article in the Sunday Times entitled Farmer Clarkson on which animals he can't bear to kill. So he goes on in the article to talk about how he loves certain animals and wants to brutally kill others and I quote, I wouldn't hurt an otter but would happily stamp repeatedly on the head of a badger. Again, admitting how much of a morally inconsistent speciesist hypocrite he really is. But other than his show Top Gear, Jeremy's also got a show called Clarkson Farm, where he exploits and kills animals on the, as he calls it, diddly squat farm. And the idea of diddly squat, I think in the UK diddly squat means making hardly anything, no money. So it's the idea is like Jeremy nobly farms animals for hardly any money. And it's all a big load of crap because Jeremy has a net worth of $70 million all right, so he's just basically doing it for, I don't know, some weird farmer clout, romanticizing of farming or something. He's trying to prove how tough farmers have it or something like this. It's, I don't know, it's quite bizarre. But what I most wanted to focus on is this. So this is a Sun article entitled, Former Top Gear presenter Jeremy Clarkson is embarking on a new journey, taking six sheep to their deaths on his show, Clarkson Farms. The 61 year old burst into tears as he became overwhelmed with emotion after he drove three ewes to an abattoir for them to be put down. Why is that? Why is that, Jezza? Jeremy, Mr. Making fun of vegans constantly. Why are you getting so filled with emotion? Isn't this like the circle of life? You know, isn't killing animals like manly and aren't vegans radical SJW, politically weird, pale gaunt, I don't know, whatever you wanna, else you wanna, Call us, I don't, you've got a bunch of other stuff here. Why are you getting so emotional about cutting the heads off of lambs that you like? Hmm, let's keep going. Jeremy made the decision to end their life in the second installment of his new show that follows his life as he embarks on being a farmer. It comes after he was told that three of his ewes would be unable to breed healthy lambs and he doesn't class them as pets. He was advised to have them be killed. So basically, they didn't need to be killed. He only killed them because they couldn't bear young for him. They couldn't make money for his diddly squat farm, which is just a load of nonsense TV show. So they died for nothing. He killed them because he was advised as they weren't pets for them to go to the slaughterhouse. Didn't even have to kill them. That's even more sickening actually. Speaking to those at the abattoir, Jeremy looked uneasy but decided to kill them regardless. So let me, let me just get this straight. Jeremy is so upset he has to take his animals to slaughter, even though he doesn't have to. They just couldn't bear young for him. He was so sad. Oh my God, this is, this is horrible. Okay, let's do it. You know what I mean? Like what went through his mind? Burst into tears. Oh my God, my beautiful lambs. Let's kill him. You know, you don't have to kill him. Oh, no, 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 let's kill him. Let's kill him. You know, whatever. Driving animals to their death, he said, I don't know what to say or think about this mission this morning. You know, he didn't probably didn't want to look soft in front of his traditional hard ass farming crowd. He didn't want to look like you know, one of those soft city folk. I'm a sheep farmer and this is what sheep farmers do. They take their animals to the abattoir. In chilling and upsetting scenes, the ewes were led out of Jeremy's trailer and into a pen. Appearing as a voiceover, Jeremy told viewers, what I really needed were a few soothing words telling me that what I was doing was the right thing. Well, Jeremy, your conscience was telling you another thing, wasn't it? And that's what we listen to as vegans, but you give us crap all the time. And I'm starting to think that maybe you give us so much crap because you deep down know that we're right. I don't know, it's just, uh, Jeremy represents a large proportion of males around the world who are trying to uphold this facade. You know what I mean? And you're talking to someone who's an ex-gang member and I know very much about trying to uphold this, I'm tough so I do this facade. I know all about it. Like, trust me, I know it to the extreme of where you can take this. But there's this culture farmer, this is what sheep farmers do, we cut the head off, off these beautiful little lambs. You know, this is what we do. He's forcing himself to do something he doesn't want to do. Doesn't that tell you everything you need to know? Anyways, I'm starting to think that Jeremy just projects his, um, you know, the fact, it's just like Pierce. They're both against poaching, they're both anti-vegan. 
they're both eating animals. They both got this crazy obvious hypocrisy. I'm no psychologist, but that's very easy for me to understand. However, that's not what Jeremy got as the man in charge of the abattoir told him. It's a shame because they're nice sheep, aren't they? But now I'm going to cut their head off. Looking annoyed at the camera, Jeremy explained they can't breed and they can't be with the flock. I deliberately haven't given them names, not out loud anyway. So he hadn't given them names, not out loud, not to individualize them or anything, not to give them an individual identity because it's a lot harder to kill Sally and Daisy and you know, what, Fluffy the sheep, isn't it? It's a lot harder to kill individuals. You'd rather just keep them as general units of measurement and slaughter them like that. And that oppressive mindset is the same oppressive mindset humans have used against each other. Don't individualize these people, these children, these animals, whoever they are, whichever sentient conscious being we're talking about, make them a group and then kill the group, oppress the group. That's exactly what Jeremy does in this context here with his sheep. Don't individualize them. They're just sheep. I'm a sheep farmer. This is what sheep farmers do. We cut their heads off. Jeremy was taken to a shed to fill out forms to confirm he wanted his sheep killed. They're his property. This is the problem, the property status with that of animals. They're his property. He can dictate when they live and when they die. So it was on him. So he decided this. On leaving the shed, the star told workers at the abattoir that he wanted to say one last goodbye to the ewes, but was met with some rather upsetting news. Jeremy told the boss, he was going to say bye before the abattoir owner informed him they were already dead. Oh, so you wanted to say goodbye, I'm killing you. That's like, hey, you know, I'm gonna get you executed. Hey, Hitman, just wait a second. Please, please, I wanna say goodbye. I'm really sorry, goodbye. I really liked you, I didn't give you his names anyway, but you know, catch you later. The sheep had been on my farm for three months and for all of that, they'd been very expensive, but these belligerent, sex mad, illness machines had brought a lot of joy to the farm. I'd grown to love having them around and there was one more surprise in store. This is the part that should sicken you. It should really sicken you and should really highlight this cognitive dissonance, this I feel one way, but my actions are doing completely the opposite thing. And a lot of people had this, I had this, you know, but this is blatant. This is really, really blatant. Jeremy's emotions didn't last long as he was then filmed eating the flesh of his dead ewes for dinner. I cannot wait to eat them. I cannot wait. Wow. He literally ate them. He was all sad. He loved having their company. He literally ate them. That's That to me feels like, you know, you got a pet dog at home. Imagine taking your, right now, taking your dog or cat to the slaughterhouse. You love them, right? You really love them. It's not one of those dogs that people don't care about. They live outside and they just, you know, be neglected. I'm talking about they're a part of your family, right? And then you take them to the slaughterhouse. You don't have to, literally it's on you. you. Take them to the slaughterhouse, cut their head off. Then you sit there and dine on their bodies. That is some of the most obvious blatant cognitive dissonance I've ever seen. And one of the biggest hypocrites when it comes to this issue, tries to philosophize his way around it and tries to justify it, but he really can't. You know what this reminds me of? Anyone remember that Simpsons episode where Homer gave his beloved pet lobster Pinchy a hot bath and it was a little too hot? Ended up cooking Pinchy in the water and then he like realized that Pinchy was dead and he's like freaking out, crying hysterically. And then in the evening, you see this other scene of Homer like eating Pinchy and he's like, oh my God, I'm, uh, Pinchy, oh my God, I loved you Pinchy, uh, my beloved friend. And he's like eating Pinchy, dipping them in butter and he won't share the, the corpse of Pinchy. This is that. This is that scene. I remember watching that scene when I was really young and thinking, oh my God, that's crazy. He loved this lobster doing everything with the what, lobster, walking the lobster like a dog, and, and now he's eating the lobster crying. Like, I just thought, wow, this is sadistic. But anyways, there's so much with this Jeremy guy. Like, it's just opened up this whole new opportunity for me to debunk every stupid thing that he says. Jeremy, I hope you're watching this, mate. If you are, Come on my channel, I doubt he would, but like, come on my channel and let's discuss it. Maybe I'll visit your diddly squat farm with you and uh, we can have a, a discussion about all of this stuff. Cause maybe there's a nice guy underneath that big tough guy facade that you tried to perpetuate. So anyways, in conclusion, Jeremy Clarkson is a triggered man baby, fake farming, animal exploiting, speciesist hypocrite who should stop murdering animals and be vegan. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.